Welcome to another video. If you're not new to my channel, you know that I've made a lot of videos on COVID, but so far have not made one on the origin of COVID. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Mike Hansen, and I specialize in internal medicine, also pulmonary disease and critical care medicine, board certified in all three. So you've seen the clip by Jon Stewart on the late show or the Tonight Show with Stephen Colbert. Science has in many ways helped ease uh, the suffering of this pandemic, uh, which was more than likely caused by science. <laughs> so my response, my reaction to that is, okay, even if there was a lab leak, which I think is more plausible than a bat origin, to say that this pandemic was the result of science the first SARS virus wasn't a result of science. Yes, it was originated in bats and there was some leaks that led to outbreaks, but it wasn't science that caused the SARS outbreak. Neither was MERS, the other bad coronavirus. So these viruses went from bat and eventually to human, and it's only a matter of time before this happens again because there's so many coronaviruses in bats that are very similar and continue to mutate and evolve. But to the argument that they were messing around with this virus with gain-of-function research and essentially hot-rotting the spike protein so that it binds more effectively to the ACE2 receptor and that, that subsequently that virus, that new modified virus, leaked from the lab, that's a very real possibility. But even if that were proven, it's still over the top to say that science caused the pandemic. I so, I, 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 oh my if God. there's evidence, I'd love to hear it. There's I don't a know. novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask? The Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus lab. The disease is the same name as the lab. That's just, that's just a little too weird, don't you think? The name of the lab is the Wuhan Institute of Virology, so I don't know why he's saying that, but it does house the most bat coronaviruses in the world. But there's a lot to his point. And when you add up all the pieces of the puzzle, every day it looks more and more like it was leaked from a lab. So let's break it down. The origin of how COVID originated, it's important because the answer has the potential to aid in the prevention or mitigation of future pandemics. So on May 26, 2021, President Biden directed the U.S. intelligence community to step up their investigative efforts into the origin of the pandemic and report back in 90 days. Also, Australia, the European Union, and Japan have expressed a desire to make a more concerted effort to determine the origin of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Now, on March 4th, prominent scientists in an open letter to the WHO called for a full and unrestricted investigation. Why this sudden interest? A recently released U.S. intelligence report stated that several researchers at China's WIV fell ill in November of 2019 and had to be hospitalized. And just today, there was a study that showed evidence that people had antibodies in the United States in December of 2019. Since another pandemic is inevitable, we need to learn from its virus origins. It took 14 years to definitively determine the origin of the first SARS epidemic as it jumped from bats to humans, most likely through civets. Until recently, the dominant theory has been that the virus originated from nature, going from bats to another animal, and then finally to humans. Historical evidence supporters for this theory point to history. Most previous outbreaks of infections have occurred naturally. Not just SARS and MERS, but also HIV, influenza, including Spanish flu, and Ebola. Humans and animals are living in closer proximity in more parts of the world than ever before. But the location of the first human cases of COVID was in Wuhan, 1,000 miles away from where all of the closest coronaviruses are known to exist in nature. Initially, at least, there was some evidence that the virus was found in markets near Wuhan, but this evidence has since been questioned because that virus detected there, that could have been just as easily been there as a result of human-to-human -human transmission. Researchers have tested more than 80,000 wild and domesticated animals. So far, none have been positive for COVID-19. However, this number is but a small fraction of the potential animal reservoir. 
Because coronaviruses are found in bats, it's reasonable to assume that SARS-CoV-2 was present in bats at some point in the past. In 2013, the RATG13, or rat G13 coronavirus, which is most closely related to SARS-CoV-2, that was discovered in horseshoe bats in the southern Chinese province of Yunnan. This sounds like a close genetic link, but evolutionary speaking, it's not. Just like humans have 99% of the same genes as chimps, but that 1% is actually a huge difference. So let's break down the lab leak theory. Was an employee at the Wuhan Virology Lab accidentally infected and then spread the virus, especially if the initial contacts were asymptomatic? The largest collection of bat samples, especially ones containing bat coronaviruses, are housed at the WIV. Could poor lab techniques by inadequately trained technicians allow the virus to escape? Of course. Could researchers at the WIV have made the virus more virulent and transmissible by experimenting with gain-of-function mutations? Absolutely. These mutations are designed to hasten the evolutionary process so that scientists can be prepared for future pandemics. But this lab leak theory carries more controversy because it's more politically charged and has economic, social, and political implications. Unfortunately, this theory received only a brief mention in that WHO report. Only four out of 313 pages were actually devoted to that. Several researchers inside the WIV became ill in the fall of 2019 with symptoms that were consistent with COVID-19 or the seasonal flu. So back in that November, three WIV researchers became sick enough to seek hospital care. Dr. Robert Redfield believes the current pandemic began in Wuhan as a localized outbreak sometime in September through October of 2019, especially because of how well adapted this virus is to human ACE2 receptors. That's why he thinks that this was coming from a lab. The virus essentially hit the ground running. The Program for Monitoring Emerging Diseases did not formally notify the United States of the cluster of patients with pneumonia until December 31st of 2019. Dr. Robert Cadillac said that China uses 30-day lead time to purchase supplies. Dr. Redfield spoke with his Chinese counterpart, Dr. George Zhao, who was distraught that many people infected with COVID were not at that wet market. Lab outbreaks have occurred before. This has happened in China, where SARS was actually leaked from the lab, but also other parts of the world as well. A smallpox lab leak occurred in the UK in 1978, anthrax, which occurred in 2014 in the United States. Also, Dr. Shi Zengli, the Batwoman, she's admitted that coronavirus research was carried out in labs with biosafety level two rather than the more stringent biosafety level four. So in a biosafety level two lab, researchers wear white coats and gloves, but not protective gear. U.S. Embassy officials did raise concerns about WIV's lab safety in 2018. These concerns specifically addressed the severe shortage of appropriately trained technicians. Chinese experts have also expressed concerns about lab safety in their own country, lamenting that lab trash can contain man-made viruses, bacteria, or microbes, and that, quote, some researchers discharge lab materials into the sewer after experiments without a specific biological disposal mechanism. U.S. labs have also been cited for safety issues, including the biosafety level BSL-4, the United States Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases, that facility in Fort Detrick. Mark Lipsitch, a well-known Harvard University epidemiologist, estimated the risk of a pandemic occurring due to an accidental release from a high-security biolab at around 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 10,000 per year. He previously warned about the proliferation of these labs globally, especially as it pertains to gain-of-function research. So this lab leak theory gains credence when independent journalists, investigators, and global health authorities have been denied access to WIV researchers. So WIV researchers have published research on engineering the gain-of-function mutations in chimeric viruses. In other words, a man-made product from artificially fusing two different viruses together. The argument in favor of gain-of-function research in general is that it's going to help us prepare for the next pandemic by developing drugs and vaccines. 
the opposition to doing that gain-of-function research is based on the risk of a lab escape that could cause the next pandemic. The WIV received a $600,000 grant from the U.S. government through EcoHealth Alliance, an American nonprofit. According to that nonprofit group, the funds were provided to help with sampling and lab capacity, not gain-of-function research. Quote, the NIH has not funded gain-of-function work, according to Robert Kessler. That was uh, quoted from an email exchange with reporters at the Washington Post. Another quote, EcoHealth Alliance was funded by the NIH to conduct study of coronavirus diversity in China. From that award, we subcontracted work with the WIV to help with sampling and lab capacity. The researchers at WIV have conducted experiments on rat G13. It's a bat coronavirus that is 96.2 similar to SARS-CoV-2. So it's the most closely, genetically speaking, resembled virus of this SARS-CoV-2. These experiments were to understand how bat coronaviruses might infect humans. Some of the work was funded by the NIH and by the U.S. Defense Threat Reduction Agency of Department of Defense through EcoHealth Alliance. U.S. intelligence agencies suggest that Rat G13 may have been the backbone for this SARS-CoV-2. Other scientists have suggested that the combination of an optimized receptor binding site, where the virus binds to the human ACE2 receptor, and the furin cleavage site, which is a unique series of nucleotides that helps the virus enter human cells. So that might also provide evidence in favor of lab manipulation. David Relman is a microbiologist at Stanford, and he speculates that scientists may have been tempted to create a recombinant virus to study the furin cleavage site. So chimeras have been produced in the lab. These chimeras have bat coronavirus backbones and spike proteins that bind to human ACE2 receptors. The chimeras were meant to simulate natural genetic recombination events. Dr. Shi published a paper back in 2017 about an experiment in which she created new hybrid bat coronaviruses. Was the SARS-CoV-2 virus biologically engineered or manipulated? So the team led by Christian Anderson, a virologist at Scripps Research that's in La Jolla, California, determined that it was improbable. The genetic differences between SARS-CoV-2 and rat G13 are randomly spread throughout that genome. A genetic analysis suggests that SARS-CoV-2 didn't originate from rat G13, but since then, other virologists, including Dr. Alina Chan from MIT and Harvard, have refuted this. Nikolai Petrovsky, an Australian immunologist, studied the SARS-CoV-2 virus after Chinese released its genetic sequence. He said that the spike proteins studying SARS-CoV-2 bound more tightly to the human ACE2 receptor than target receptors on other species. His investigation came out at a time when scientists were saying that anything other than a natural origin of the virus was a conspiracy theory. The Chinese Ministry of Education sent out a directive, quote, any paper that traces the origin of the virus must be strictly and tightly managed. There is evidence that researchers at WIV removed and then altered online records of their work working with that rat G13 and other viruses. Here's a quote for you. How on earth can I offer up evidence for something where there is no evidence? That's what she said. But China's refusal to allow investigations into the lab has only furthered accusations. So in conclusion, there's no solid evidence that SARS-CoV-2 infection originated in nature or from a lab leak. She was responsible for investigating the coronavirus infections in Wuhan back on December 30th of 2020. She said she breathed a sigh of relief when none of the samples from the sick matched any of the samples in her lab. She also claims she looked into the matter and reviewed the lab records and basically said, trust me, nothing to see here, I already looked. And the Chinese government gave the WHO limited access to data and samples. This secrecy resulted in a report that 14 governments, including the United States, believe is incomplete. A classified report drafted in May 2020 by researchers at the government-backed Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory found that the COVID-19 virus might have escaped from a lab in Wuhan. However, the report also said that the virus might have originated naturally by zoonotic means. Unfortunately, so far, we don't have an answer, and we might not get an answer for a long time if we get an answer at all. 
But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And do subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to see more of these types of videos.